let it be known this is ill-advised most fun things are come on <laughs> twisted her up like a pretzel wishbone rules apply Makita wins I never would have guessed look at that over oh, an inch over an inch it's gone one two three four five six seven eight twisted up eight times that's an incredible material right there gentlemen welcome back to the shop today the Makita brushless compact impact driver what in the jesus even is this small medium and torquey i don't know we're gonna have her a part see how she chooches right off the hop here nice feature it's got the bearing housing separate so that's three separate components instead of just having the clamshell halves that come together you get more better location of the bearing and a stiffer overall because you get fasteners coming in from two planes instead of just along the one so that's a nice feature and we see that that's also in the uh, milwaukee there i'm pescited to get in here i'm not sure what the mechanism the hitting mechanism is so if it's going to be actual hammers or just one of those things that flops up and down one thing i will say though with the over molding come on when are we going to get a tool that actually looks like a tool instead of looking like a toy you know pew pew they make them so that the I guess that's to appeal to our inner little boy. They make them to look like sci-fi movie props. It's just, it's like, look at this. It's, it's a little bit beyond the beyonds here. Starting at the beginning, we have the leads, chrome plated copper, nice leads. Here's the half clamshell, uh, PA6, glass fiber reinforced 30%. These actually, these UHMW little pins are for retaining. They're to prevent the battery from rattling loose. That was apparently a, a problem in the older Makita tools, and they've gone and fixed that with that little guy. And here, here's the controller module board thing. Uh, Chineseium Times New Roman font on there. I wish they, <laughs> yeah. I guess that's just the default English font a little I, I'm not sure I threw out of course I did I threw out the manual so um, I don't know what that does hey there's the confuser all epoxied in there we can't see anything lots and lots of signaling coming back of course because it is brushless the computer needs to monitor what is going on with the position of the rotor because it actually needs to fire each one of these electromagnets in here, which we'll see momentarily. And in a specific sequence, in relation, it has to be synced up with the rotor. Otherwise, she won't shoot. So that's why all that signaling is coming back. Nice big armor on switch here. That's nice name brand, and it's in its own little protective condom to keep it together. Bellows on it even. So nice feature this is a nice trigger switch bellows of course keeps the dust ingress down to a minimum nice positive detent on the forward reverse so what would be on here no no i was going to say a half bridge but the controller for this is far more complicated than just a, a brushed dc motor but essentially in here there'll be a little circuit board turns it on contacts to turn it on and then a little circuit board with a potentiometer that sends an analog voltage signal back to the computer to tell it how fast you want the thing to go while we're on the electrical side this is new nice instead of a chintzy little led you know just a five millimeter domed led in a lens it's actually gone ahead and put some proper led cobs on there two of them nice and bright we'll have a look at the look at how this stuff is so compact tiny you could say so i don't see any laminations it looks like a solid core of course there would be magnets in here but there's also a ferrite along here now is that ferrite for sensing the position of the rotor or is it for something else entirely 
Let's pull out our handy dandy magnetic viewing film. There's the poles that actually do the work for the rotor. They get pulled along by the poles in here, the alternating poles. And there we go. So that ceramic magnet is sensing the position. Here we go. See there's one pole there, two poles, three poles, four poles. Ooh, monkey like shiny, beautiful die cast aluminum. And what we're going to do is, it appears to be two nuts here. So we'll get the gland end off and then we'll try and twist her off or break it in the process. Either way. That's tightening. That's tightening. Haha, <laughs> <laughs> not so tough now. <laughs> Righty loosey, lefty tidy. We're <laughs> yeah, exactly. We all discombobulated here. Holy oh fuck, that is a nice part. Sealed bearing, thin, real thin cross section. That's a special bearing. I wouldn't be able to take much load because the balls are so small, but nice and big on the uh, ID to fit. That's all powdered, centered powdered metal gearing. And okay. There we have the hammering mechanism. That's a single stage planetary gear set. Let's spin in the hammer. We'll just check the ratio here. We hold the ring gear and turn the pinion. One, and we, then we count. I gotta take my socks off for this too. So this is weird. The ratio here is nine to one. So because there's two tangs that impact the dogs on this anvil, you would think that whatever the output speed is, 3600, you would have double that for the amount of hammer blows. But you don't get double that. It's non-linear. It's, it's 200 more than that. So there's something going on with the harmonic effect where this is bouncing up and down. Of course, what has to happen here, and uh, let's take, now oh, that's crappy. So the front, there is a, a needle bearing, needle roller bearing, and then a spacer, UHMW plastic spacer. Eh. Eh. The name says it all. It's plastic. So there's the hammer. So what happens here is this spin of things, this hits, and it has to come up against the, the, the spring force, come up and over this anvil. So that's what's going on. When it hits, it imparts some energy into the anvil, but it also has to impart energy into this spring to get it up and over. That means that there's some harmonics going on here because you would think normally this would be double whatever this rate is of speed, <laughs> rate of speed. That's the stupidest thing ever. Whatever the turning speed is oops magnets is there anything they can't do well, here we have the rotary impact group the anvil this is forged and then ground nice part there and here's the hammer it appears to be forged as well and even the carrier for the planetaries has been forged or at, at the very least it's been turned and also milled so that is not powdered metal very telling that that the impact the the stuff that is subject to the highest forces is forged rather than centered well, i think we can all figure out why that is now what happens is when this impacts it tweaks this sidewards and there's a there's a ball groove here that forces this up back and over the the tangs of the anvil. So the fact that this isn't one to one with the speed, see this will turn at 3600, 3600 ripples, but it impacts at 
800. So there's some non-linearity there. There's some harmonics going on that this thing is spinning and it doesn't hit on every single half turn. It only hits on every seven eighths, 15 sixteenths of a turn. So there's some, this thing will be just shaking all over the place. That'd be real interesting to see actually. Hmm. 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 That gives me an idea. Okay, we got the dick in the vise. We're gonna mill this out as much as possible without weakening it, hopefully, to the point that it explodes. This is not my idea. Nick Moore actually did this years ago with a high-speed camera. And he's got a lot of cool stuff on his channel. That's the beauty of YouTube, right? It's dudes in their own shop doing what dudes do. And uh, yeah, check out his channel. He's got some interesting stuff on there, Nick Moore. So we're going to emulate that experiment from two years ago. I'm going to mill this out and then we'll hit this with the high speed potato vision. I love it when a plan something somethings. Here's the motor field here. Big beefy windings. Laminated steel cork. Yeah, get off of there. A little bit sticky. And we see all the control board here. It's right in here. We can see three Hall effect sensors offset by about 30 degrees each. Right around there. So as this magnet wipes past the different poles uh, indicate on here and sends it down to the confuser and the confuser it knows what to do so we were okay we're gonna get her oh you gotta be fucking shitting me brain dead motherfucker once we get it together we won't be able to see that wait no no i did that on purpose yeah that's by purpose so that uh, safety yeah so we'll just have to run this. We'll run this out. Oh, uh -huh. We'll run this in the vise with not this motor, but with a drill motor, and we'll see what's going on. Then we can put it back together and still use it. Yeah, brilliant. How do you figure this is going to go? Get her in the bearing splitter. Oh. 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 -hoo. Nope, I'm gonna break that. If it were easy, somebody else would have already done it.
Perfect. For the second time. Okay, let's see if she works. I just want to stick my finger right in there. Oh, oh, oh. That would be bad. Oh, uh, this, I don't know. Slow, high, torque. Slow and hast. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Okay, we'll get the high speed camera set up. Looking at this, we'll get the studio lighting going. There we go, blinding. And we'll see what's going on there in high speed. Oh yeah, that's really fucking cool. That's the potato vision here. High speed potato vision blurrily illustrates the thing is not mass tuned. It's it's harmonically, it's not hitting as hard as it could because you see the hammer is coming down and it's bouncing. And sometimes it bounces twice on the anvil with the second little hit. It doesn't clear it all the way. Very interesting. And you see here when we're going full speed, it's almost on a diagonal. Like it's uh, yeah, pretty neat. I'm sure you can get you could get better performance if you did some studies on what kind of preload to put on that spring and really, really tune it. But then of course it only works for that one speed. It's not going to work for all the other speed. There you go. Not a bad little tool. Made some custom speed holes. Special modifications myself. What for increasing the chooch factor. Uh, no lack of torque here. I mean, the quarter inch bolts don't stand a chance. Lots and lots of torque. Very, very light. Uh, I like it. I'm going to change this one out for this one. So at some point we'll tear this one down. I don't believe I have. We'll have a look at it. What was that? Something. And uh, I'll give this one away. But I'm going to keep this one, I think. Thanks for watching. Keep your dick in a voice. Now, how you finger we're going to get that out of her? Kajiji the hell out of it. <laughs> to the eBay machine.